Thursday, October 4th, 2018. If that's an investigation, it's a bullshit investigation. Sen. Bob Menendez, DNJ, said of the FBI report on allegations of sexual assault lodged against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. The reality is, that is not a full and thorough investigation. Thursday, October 4, 2018 As Christine Blasey Ford's case languished, uncorroborated, many of Kavanaugh's critics settled on the idea that he perjured himself. Particularly, they claimed he lied about the meaning of Boof and Devil's Triangle in his yearbook. Thursday, October 4, 2018 Brett Kavanaugh was the victim of a Democratic smear campaign grounded in a sexual assault allegation that, after 66 days, a Senate Judiciary Committee inquiry, and a thorough FBI investigation, remains completely unsupported by any established facts and is actually contradicted by witnesses and even the accuser herself. Thursday, October 4, 2018 Republican Rep. Kevin Kramer is looking better and better to become North Dakota's junior U.S. Senator. And for that, he has the current senator to thank. Thursday, October 4, 2018 President Trump and his administration have been harsh critics of China. But his upcoming schedule signals a weak commitment to our allies in Asia and the Pacific. Thursday, October 4, 2018 If it wasn't clear already that Christine Blasey Ford's attorneys are shameless political hacks, their letter this week to the FBI director regarding the agency's supplemental investigation of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh should remove all doubt. Thursday, October 4, 2018 In the aftermath of the historic devastation imposed by hurricanes last year, several Puerto Rican towns refused to let a good crisis go to waste. New tax notices issued by at least eight Puerto Rico municipalities show that local governments are trying to scam federal taxpayers into sending them a bigger piece of federal relief funds. Thursday, October 4, 2018 I spoke at the University of California, Berkeley, on Monday about the importance of free speech. Contrary to what you might predict, my audience was polite and the event ran smoothly. Thursday, October 4, 2018 In his first debate with Rep. Beto O'Rourke, a Democrat from El Paso, Sen. Ted Cruz promoted Texas's low taxes and light regulations as essential to job creation, citing as evidence, the cost of a one-way U-Haul from California to Texas is more than 300% the cost the other way around. Thursday, October 4, 2018 While in theory it makes sense that Planned Parenthood is furious there might be men and women on the Supreme Court who would overturn Roe v. Wade, the fact that the controversial act would then be relegated to the states is not only legal but proper. Thursday, October 4, 2018 Sen. Joe Donnelly, the vulnerable Indiana Democrat, has been working the middle to survive this year's election. He's advertising about his own moderation. He votes with the president some days, votes against him others, and reminds voters of his centrist record every chance he gets. It is the only way to win re-election in a state that went for Trump by 19 points, and from day one it has been the de facto strategy of the Donnelly campaign. Thursday, October 4, 2018 CNN's Jim Shooter believes that Brett Kavanaugh's angry outbursts last week during a hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee are disqualifying because, let's face it, this is Washington, D.C., and being accused of orchestrating gang rapes when you're just 15 years old is politics. Thursday, October 4, 2018 Abstaining from sex and alcohol, or from one or the other, would be the most effective antidote to reducing inappropriate sexual behavior and assault. Thursday, October 4, 2018 The fate of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh will be decided in the next three days and they are going to be lit. Here is how it will, and is already, going down in the Senate. Thursday, October 4, 2018 It looks like Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, our Kentucky, will have enough votes to confirm Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh this weekend. Thursday, October 4, 2018 Unemployment is down, the economy is growing and companies have a need for recently graduated skilled workers. Some of those recent hires are foreign students who have applied for H-1B visas. But now, thanks to a change in Trump's immigration policy, they can't start working. 
That's bad for the economy, bad for the workers, and a terrible policy for the country.